two, one. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. So we are at our fourth episode of No Conditions. My guest is Dave Kelly, the second assistant chief for the Orland Volunteer Fire Department. Welcome. Right. Thank you. Thank you. How many years do you have? With the fire department or the fire service? With the, we'll start with OVFD. We'll OVF push the mic up just a little bit. Pull it more towards you. OVFD. I've got a little over 10 years now. Wow. Did it go by fast? Went by really fast. Did it? Yeah. So you just recently became chief. Uh, we just got a new paid chief. Over 100 years, we have always had a volunteer as a chief, and now we have a paid one. What is, uh, is it kind of weird? Is it weird knowing, it, or is it, it, nothing it, really changed? To me, it hasn't really changed a lot. Uh, the chief that went through the interview process and we chose off the interview committee had been in a position with his work that he was able to respond quite often anyway. Mm -hmm. And so the transition was seemed pretty smooth. Obviously, he's down there full time now where he wasn't before, but uh, definitely it was a move we needed to make in the volunteer fire department in that direction. I think that's awesome. It's, and those are pretty big shoes to fill, especially whenever Jeff Gomes, you know, being the past chief. And Well, I had a unique opportunity. Uh, I worked with Jeff for, shoot, over 20 years. Wow. And when he was the volunteer chief, I saw something that really opened my eyes on how busy that position is. And then to balance that with a family and balance that with work and just a personal life was really tough on any individual that held that job. Well, it'll age, and it'll totally age anybody. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, it'll, it'll age you and exhaust you, especially whenever you've got, you know, a whole bunch of shit going on. Well, you didn't see a lot of people doing it for uh, 5, 10, 15 years by any means. It's, it's a tough position to be put in. Mm -hmm. I watched him at lunchtime make phone calls. I saw him down at the fire department after work. I saw him taking days off to deal with insurance companies after big fires and crashes and things like that. And it's a th very thankless job, especially as a volunteer. But uh, the guys prior to this paid position, in including the current chief, really were dedicated to what they did. I think it's awesome. Oh, I, it's I totally, I think it's great. I think... And, you know, I I don't know. Don't you think that, too, it's to the point to where it used to be a thankless job? But, I mean, you're kind of seeing people kind of, you know, every once in a while you get that one push of somebody where they, you know, they appreciate you and you can totally tell, you know, this is why I do it. And it, is it is it like um, where they get closer and closer, like the, the appreciation and the, you know, do you ever see that or is that not? I, I think everybody likes firemen. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's, that's, that's a given. But when I say appreciate, no one has any idea of the amount of time, just time alone, mm -hmm. uh, let, let alone different things you deal with mentally and physically. And it's not just about going to calls. Oh, no. It's about training. It's about fundraising. You know, it's about doing things in the community as a fire department, let alone what you might be doing in your personal life. Yeah. And I think, too, that kind of throws me into the question of, you know, I think it's a big thing for people to understand is that you know volunteers they go in just like everybody else and they do suffer from PTSD they suffer from you know all different kinds of things and then they have to switch off at two o'clock in the afternoon after they just went to a call at 10 in the morning and then do their other job you know it's you can't shut it down you just you have to go from one to the other and I mean not saying you know but I I think it's that's a huge thing you know well, you brought it up, and it's actually something that I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. because I've seen what can happen. And you're, you're, you're taking an ordinary citizen that wants to be a volunteer and putting them in positions that they had no idea they were going to see coming. Mm -hmm. And not to get too graphic, but the things that we have seen or that we see, I wouldn't wish on anyone. Mm -mm. And yeah. it's something that I personally am trying to, for the fire department to get the kind of resources that we need so that people can get the help that they may need. Typical of guys in this position is they stuff and everybody's okay and everybody's fine, but um, people handle things differently. And a guy that may be in 25 years 
may go to that one call after stuffing all those years, and it may be the one that puts him over the edge where he doesn't want to do it anymore. I completely agree. And, you know, it's a very real thing. And don't get me wrong, I don't want anybody to feel sorry for us. We have chosen to do this. Mm -hmm. But part of doing it is you are going to see things and do things that a normal person wouldn't want to ever see or do. No, I completely agree, 100%. And I think having the resources, too, you know, and I think that they should be available and ready for anybody that has that problem and you know there shouldn't be any stigma I think that's another thing too is a lot of people you know especially guys I mean I don't know if it's like that but you know they ha kind of have this bravado thing where I'm fine I'm totally fine I'm fine I'm fine I see people suffering it all the time and then you know you sit there and think well where where's the next step where do we go what do we do that's why I'm glad that you're you're advocating for this is because I think it does it does need to be addressed no, it definitely needs to be addressed and, and <coughs> the, the bottom line is we have an 800 number that you can immediately call 24 7 that's a national uh, phone number or resource mm -hmm. um, we're working with the, the county at the county level uh, there's EAP program with the city it's, it's all things that we're looking at and coming out with what's going to be the best solution and the best resource for us to use as volunteers and it, it you know different people need different things um, what's what happens after you suffer from something you've seen what do you turn to how do you handle it um, are all things that need to be figured into this mm -hmm. and sometimes people they end up picking up things that they wouldn't normally do if they didn't have the ptsd going exactly and, I've, and i've seen it and that's the thing i guess that bothers me the most is you'd like to be able to leave it there when you walk out the door mm -hmm. from a call but that's not reality, that's not life, and that's not how, no, how we handle things as humans. And it's not always positive. I mean, that's the problem is, you know, I always think about it as, you know, it's kind of like CHP. You know, CHP, whenever they're on a call on the freeway, chances are whenever they get a call, it's not going to be a good one. It's just not going to be a good one. Your guys is, you know, every once in a while you get that call where it's like, yeah, that sucked, but, you know, you just move on. And then you get ones that aren't so bad and, you know, and then you get the really bad ones where you're thinking, holy shit, this is not yeah. good. Well, one of the things uh, when I very first joined the volunteer fire department in Butte County, uh, one of the old chiefs who uh, had a lot of wisdom. And the one thing he told me is when everybody else is running out, you're running in. Mm -hmm. And the second thing he told me was if if no one if you're there because no one else can do it mm -hmm. and I try to remember that sometimes it's better to go try and do your best because you do have some training than to sit on the sidelines and do nothing mm -hmm. well and you also have background in in law enforcement and mm -hmm. do you think that helped coming in to the fire oh yeah do you yeah I got a story from one of my very first calls I was actually in the Durham volunteers for 10 years and we had a vehicle into a tree and I'd, I'd already done 12 years in law enforcement. I took a little break to raise my child through the uh, younger years. Uh, <laughs> so I was there and not working weekends at the PD at Chico. And, uh, but I got a kick out of the captain at the time on the engine. It's 2 or 3 in the morning. Gal hits a tree. And he, uh, like, held me back from going over there. She was, had already passed, uh, succumbed from the injuries immediately from when she hit the tree and he's, he's like, well, no, you don't, we, you, you don't want to see that. We don't want you to see that. And I, I mean, I played it down and said, okay, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, a couple months later, he found out my background and almost apologized <laughs> because he thought that I was, uh, you know, he was worried about me. And then I, well, I appreciate that. And, and I've actually done that for, for other people. If you don't have to see it, don't see it. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this particular case, it's like, it's just another call for me. I've seen a lot of garbage over the years. Have you really? Yeah. I think it's just crazy. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything that you guys have done. Absolutely 100%. I mean, I have a family in there too, but... You know. I know. You know what it takes to do this. I do. It's such a sacrifice. And I, it's a sacrifice, but I, I don't look at it as a sacrifice. I love to help people. Absolutely. That's why I do it. It's why I got in law enforcement when I was 18. It's why, mm -hmm. as a reserve, and that's why I did the fire service. It's a way of helping people get a little adrenaline rush once in a while. Um, there are fun parts of it. There are exciting parts of it. And you truly do get to help people. And I don't want to concentrate on the negative uh, because I there's a lot of positive things uh, that when you go home from a call that's like, wow, I really made a difference today. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing more satisfying than 
using your training and we'll use CPR as an example where you actually do CPR on someone and you make a save where they live to, to have another day. That's and awesome. that is a very good feeling because you made a difference because of what you did and that you weren't afraid to do it and mm-hmm. you stepped up and did it. And somebody's around today to continue to live this great life. So what is it that, what's one thing that you want people to know about it? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a little different now than what it was, of course, 100 years ago, even 25 years ago. You know, you see people not joining as much or, you know, the lives are, you know, the lives are too busy. They got things going on. But what is one thing that you want people to know the positive about that place? I mean, when walking away at the end of the day, you know, do you do you really encourage people to, if they think they can do it, get in there and, oh, and try it? Absolutely. If you want to do it, you need to step up and do it if you want to. Mm -hmm. But I learned a long time ago when I very first got in the volunteer fire service, you don't ever want to talk anybody into it because you've got to have a little bit of passion for it. You've got to have a little bit of passion for wanting to help people. Mm -hmm. But you also have to have the will to do the training because you ask what the changes are from what they were, say, 20 years ago. Liabilities just a big one crazy you know everybody's too happy Mm -hmm. and nobody wants to do anything wrong no but the bottom line is a volunteer firefighter is 24 hours a day 365 days a year and i have zero i'm not back talking or negative talking a paid firefighter by any means but the reality of is i'm on call 365 24 hours a day Mm -hmm. and so I give you an example. There's days I've gone to 10 fire calls in a day. And there's those other days where you don't go f- to a call for three days. But the reality of it is, if you're able, you go. Mm-hmm. And it's a chance to help somebody. I think it's awesome. I really do. And we also have fundraising. You guys also have fundraising. You have the fireman's ball. You have the spaghetti feed. You have, you know, ticket drive and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that kind of helps out, too, where it kind of breaks up the monotony and you know, kind of brings everyone in together for it. Yeah, it's, it's good team building, for lack of a better <coughs> term. But uh, I guess something that I really would like people to know about is how the fire department is made up. Mm-hmm. The, the fire department are basic is basically, the fire department is actually three separate entities. Mm-hmm. There are the volunteers wh- who are a nonprofit. And they don't get paid they at all. They don't get paid. Mm-hmm. There, but there is also the rural fire district and Orland City Fire Department. And what happens is uh, the, the, the Orland City and the rural are both ha- have a tax, obviously, through the city or through the fire district that helps support uh, the, the, some of the vehicles, some of the equipment, things like that. Mm-hmm. The Orland volunteers, how they do their day-to-day stuff is raised from the community by going door to door and that's one way the second way is through the spaghetti feed Uh, we typically buy equipment that we need with spaghetti feed money the door to door ticket drive for fireman's ball is how we sustain ourselves throughout the year and there is definitely an issue right now that I would like to make people very aware of and that's and don't don't quote me on the exact number but i believe the last time the fire district raised their assessment was over 30 years ago wow and we are in a position not i don't even say a position we are in dire need of being able to raise that Mm -hmm. assessment up to what we need today Mm -hmm. and the reality of it is even what we need to raise it isn't a lot of money Mm-mm. it really isn't but unfortunately the only way it looks like we're going to be able to raise it is by a two-thirds vote mm-hmm. and i know when i see tax increase on any ballot measure i vote no mm-hmm. but in this case it's something that we really need because what's going to happen if it doesn't work out is it's going to cost the the rural citizens of this county in the Orland fire district a whole lot more money uh, we want to keep what we have in place it's very very low cost 
no, absolutely. compared to what it could be if it wasn't a paid department or we had to go to an outside agency to contract mm-hmm. with them. And if you if you want to look into something like that, look at the counties around you. Yep, and how much they're paying. And you, you, we have a very unique setup, especially in Orland. We have 45 plus members. And it's pretty cool when a fire whistle goes off and the pagers go off. I mean, you get four, five, six, seven guys there within a couple minutes responding. Mm-hmm. But not only that, then you get another four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten right behind them. So when we go to a call, a big call, say a structure fire or a large vegetation fire, we are throwing so many resources at it in such a hurry. It's one of the reasons that Orland Volunteer Fire Department is so successful. Mm-hmm. It is a win-win for everybody yep. to be able to put those kinds of resources on the road to the call that fast nobody else around here has that Mm -mm. nobody has the resources that we have and we don't want to lose that no so one of the things that we want to to get across is we need this particular assessment to pass and we need to support the rural side of the fire department and we need you guys is what it is exactly you know i used to i used to tell people all the time when my husband was in and They'd sit there and they'd bitch about, you know, all the, oh, you know, there's so many members and there's this and that. And I said, do yourself a favor. I want you to send out a mass text to all your friends, your whole entire call log, your whole list of contacts that you have. And I want you to send a mass text and just say, I need you. And then send it out and wait three minutes and see who shows up at your doorstep. Not knowing what you need, not knowing how you need it, not knowing anything. Just see how many people actually show up on your doorstep. And they just kind of looked at me like, that doesn't make any sense. And I said, you have all these volunteers. They don't know what they're going into. They only get a splice of the call, only a little taste of it to see. They, most of the time, you guys don't even know what you're walking into, whose house you're walking into. I mean, a lot of times I hear on the pager, you know, oh, be careful, live ammunition or, or whatever. You don't, You don't know that until you get there. You know, Mm -hmm. because most of the time dispatch doesn't know that that's even going on. So to get all of those guys in one area to show up for a stranger and say, I am here for you 100 percent. All I got, all it took was a call. That's it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's pretty incredible. That's a good analogy. Yeah. See how many people in your contacts (laughs) will actually show up and all you have to don't say nothing. Just say, I need you at my house and see how many people show up. Yep. And I think that's that's a big one right there, you know. Well, the other part you have to remember, too, is uh, depending on where you live as a volunteer, y- you may be there in 30 seconds or mm-hmm. a minute, yeah. uh, depending on the type of call and who may live in the area. And it's another unique thing about our volunteers. Uh, we have some really well-trained people in our department. Mm-hmm. And to live less than a mile away uh, on the east side of town, on the north side of town, on the south side of town, on the west side of town, to be able to have someone at your doorstep in a, a dire emergency where time is of the essence, mm-hmm. and you have that volunteer there that fast, you may not have the fire engine, but most of us carry medical supplies of some kind to stop the bleeding, um, you know, have the training to do CPR, whatever it takes. Our response time is incredible because of the amount of people that we have and the equipment we have. Mm -hmm. And we need to continue that. Oh, absolutely. You guys just got a new fire truck? I just... We did. Well, we got a fire truck. A fire truck. And we have a new fire engine. And a fire... Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Tomato, tomato. (laughs) Tomato, potato. Tomato, potato. (laughs) One goes, be-doo, be-doo, (laughs) be-doo. We have, I believe, a 110-foot ladder truck Mm -hmm. that was way overdue Mm -hmm. and will get us way into the future um, how it was specced out. And the guys did a great job going back and making sure we were getting what we needed. And then we also have a new rural engine, and that's an incredible rig. We've really come a long way in 10 years from – it's been over closer to 15, I believe. I don't know the exact numbers since the last time we got a new engine. Now, are those two trucks big game changers for you guys? They are because as of June of this year, uh, 2019, some tradition and a lot of fun stopped. <laughs> we, uh, we rode tailboard. We were one of the last department by probably quite a few years mm-hmm. that rode on the tailboard. Mm-hmm. 
and we no longer do that. Kind of a and bummer. It was a bummer. I tell Fun you that suckers. there's not a there's not a guy around, <laughs> I think that really wanted to come off, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, it was the right thing to do. It's mm-hmm. the safest thing to do, but it is a game changer because on these new trucks we can seat six to eight. Wow. To roll to a call. Mm-hmm. And almost every one of them has an air pack that they can have on before we ever step out of the door. That's a game changer. Mm. And the, both the truck, the new truck and the new engine, both have those capabilities. Fantastic. Because the second new trucks that we pull, we have to come off the tailboards, where we used to get sp- up to seven people, we now can only take three. Wow. So those two new engines, or in truck and engine, are definitely game changers. And um, there, it's there's definitely been a um, learning curve. Learning curve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a learning curve and a training curve. Mm-hmm. But we're getting it. We're getting it down. I we, think you, with any new toy, you have to tweak it and you have to figure it out. And then, yeah. you know. Well, there's some trial and error. Oh, absolutely. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't cost us anything. But definitely the, the new tools are, I mean, that's. That's the th- kicker. Th- those are. Those are big toys to have, <laughs> to, and and uh, I don't mean that as a real toy. I'm just saying. <laughs> nope. The, those are just those. not. Just let you know, we don't have to be too PC. We are <laughs> we are totally fine. I get it. Um, so does anybody does anybody keep their turnouts at home anymore, or do they strictly keep it at the station? Well, <laughs> sorry. Huh? Ask again. Does anybody keep their turnouts at the station, or do they, or do they always keep it at the station now, or does anybody still keep them at home? Does that? Well, that's a good question. Um, another big thing, a passion I have is what we bring home. Mm-hmm. Uh, the things that burn now are bad for you. Yeah. The petroleum products that things are made with, you blow your mind, and the things that when we go to fires burn. I do not want any of that stuff in my house. Mm-hmm. Typically, when I get home, I go straight to the laundry room and I strip down because I don't want to expose myself or anyone that may come into my residence mm-hmm. to that stuff. It's bad. It's nasty. And so most guys keep their gear at the firehouse, and those are the guys that go straight to the firehouse. Uh, myself, where I live, I keep my gear in my rig. Mm-hmm. I typically keep it outside of the cab Mm -hmm. because I don't want to breathe it. No. And it gets washed quite often. But um, with the carcinogens and the things like that that come from burning things, and then again, the things that you may pick up like bodily fluids and things like that at medical aids, Mm -hmm. you don't want that stuff at your house, in your house. And you're very careful where you place it in your vehicle or typically if I was driving a car, I kept it in the trunk. Uh, in the in the pickup that's in a toolbox. So, wow. Yeah, I read somewhere. What was it? It was like uh, it's like thirty five. Is it thirty five hundred dollars to outfit a fire one fireman? I believe that's about the cost. Is it? Is that just without all, any of the gizmos and gadgets on oh, the that's, gear? That's just helmet, structure, jacket, turnout pants, boots, gloves. Mm-hmm. When you start talking about air packs and things like that, you're getting up in the five ten thousand dollar range just for that stuff so you know it's it's uh it's expensive to outfit somebody Mm -hmm. and you know and then we go back to how do we supply that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and a lot of it's through the tax base Mm -hmm. and it's expensive but it's needed because when you if you start paying someone to be on a shift oh god it's it's the reality of it is you may have one pay guy, or maybe if you can afford, if your city can afford it, you may have two pay guys. But you still need those volunteers. Well, even if you just had one, which it never really made sense to me, because I mean, isn't it a rule one in, one out, two no, in, two out? Two, 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 two in, two out. Two unless in, it's a rescue. Out. Okay. Rescue, all bets are off. Yeah. You're trying to save lives, but typical structure fire with no rescue involved. Which, to be honest with you, uh, rescues don't happen very often. Mm-hmm. With with the uh, technology and things we have today, um, early detection, obviously smoke detectors, things like that. 
uh, sprinkler systems, all that stuff make a big difference. But unless it's a rescue where two guys go in, there's going to be two guys out with a separate hose, hopefully coming from a separate engine in case the first one goes down that they can go in and get those guys. So it wouldn't really even matter having one paid. I mean, other than for uh, I mean, medicals. I, I, but I, I hear stories. Oh, I mean, I, I hear stories from some of the, I know a couple of guys who, that do the single man paid guy or paid thing mm -hmm. at different departments. It, it's tough on them. That's, that's a tough position to be in. Um, I do like the way we roll. Yeah. When, when we roll, we roll big. Mm -hmm. I think you guys are awesome. 100%. Totally amazing. I do like the fun that you guys have though. I do think that that's, they have to remember that it's not all, it's all, it's not all serious. You know, sometimes you oh guys no. do get to let loose and have a, a little fun. There's a and brotherhood. There's a camaraderie. You know, it's the typical going back and forth and uh, teasing each other and pissing each other off and <laughs> jacking each other up. But it's it's a uh, it's a good thing. It, the camaraderie there is obviously a very attractive um, thing at the fire department. It's fun. It, it, we do have a lot of fun. But I tell you what, when it's time to get serious, we get serious. And shit and goes the, south, yeah. Yep. And the cool thing is when we do, we're trained to do it. Mm -hmm. We train hard. I think that's great. And so you guys go, you guys do training. You guys do just like every everybody else. You guys do the, um, go like, do you guys go out and do certain types of training? Like, do you s specifically put it, okay, this month we're going to do this, this month we're going to do that? Who comes the, up with the, the ideas the to the do officer, that? The officer have a meeting um, first Monday of the month. And it, we plan on what we're going to do and what we need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we, re we respond to a lot of medical aids, so we do a lot of medical training. But then we have to do the things, uh, have vehicle extrication at crashes, um, structure fires, vegetation fires. This is all stuff we train on, the simple stuff like throwing a ladder. Uh, one of the things that a couple of captains came, just came up with was a ventilation drill that we did for two weeks in a row. And then luckily enough, we had a gentleman donate a double wide mobile uh, recently, and we were able to drill on it one night, um, beat it up pretty good, cut some holes in the roof. <laughs> and then uh, on a Saturday, which is not a normal drill day for us, we came in and, and probably spent close to eight hours um, training on it and then burning it all the way down. I got to see uh, our rookies, two rookies, brand new, that just joined the department, got to see some fire behavior, mm -hmm. um, all packed up on air low to the ground, uh, set a room on fire, and they got to see what uh, what they're going to see someday, possibly, mm -hmm. if they have to go in and put a fire out. So uh, a lot of good training, uh, uh, very well supported by the community. You couldn't ask for more community support as far as someone gets a building they don't want anymore, and we're able to. Uh, we, we go train on those things as much as we can. It's that hands-on is the best training. You can watch YouTube videos all day long. Uh, when you get your hands dirty, and you get to see what happens when you actually put water on a fire or mm -hmm. cut a hole in a roof so it ventilates the heat, the gases, and, and see what it does to the inside of the structure. That's That hands-on stuff's the best. And to be quite honest, it's fun. Oh, absolutely. Well, I saw, too, a lot of people probably will know this now, is we're also on YouTube. OVFD is on YouTube for the uh, dodgeball dodge shot. Now, did you partake in that? I absolutely did. And how did you do? I had a great time. Was it weird? Was it? it I mean, it looked like... It was fun, but it was also... Well, I was younger when that thing came out. <laughs> <laughs> that was only like two years ago, right? Was longer than that. <laughs> but no, it kind of gave... Now, tell it, people why you guys did that. Okay, so what, what it was is uh, we cleared everything out of the bay of the firehouse, and which is, I don't know, we probably had 100 feet, so 50 foot on each side. Mm -hmm. Had the middle line, just like dodgeball. And we put all our gear on, structure jackets, turnout pants, boots, helmet, but the kicker was then we put on our breathing apparatus, which if you don't know what that is, there's a big old mask on your face with a hose going down to an air tank mm. is the simplest way of describing it. And we played dodgeball. <laughs> and now, you guys had to pull people out if they got hit. Yes. So it, if it, you got hit, you fell down. Yes. So if you got hit, you went down. If you caught it, then that person was out. But mm -hmm. when that person was out or hit, they went down and then a couple of people had to drag them off. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was it was a multifaceted drill. Obviously, it, it's good to be able to see how agile you are in your gear mm -hmm. because you want to treat in life, trial that running and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was also very good to see how fast you went through an air air bottle because it's one of the things we have to train to do. You don't want to go blowing through an air bottle in ten minutes when you need to be inside for twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, that was part of the drill, but also uh, being able to pull your partner out and. Uh, 
it, it was physically a tough drill, but it was it was a whole lot of fun. And oh, it was kind of fun to be famous. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Even though they couldn't see my face. <laughs> they all knew it. No. They saw your name on the back. That's what counts. Well, I think that's cool. I totally think that's awesome. I also like the different types of going over and seeing, like, um, you guys have Bambauer truck. And, you know, you guys use their... Bam Bauer Towing. Bam Bauer Towing. One of Orland Fire Department's yes. biggest supporters. Yes. What a good group of guys. Yes, they're amazing. I actually worked for those guys back in the day. And Did you of, really? I out of high school for a couple months. But, uh, no, they're big supporters of us, and they have def- done nothing but been over backwards to support our fire department. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's donating cars for us to cut up during extrication drills. Uh, recently, though, uh, as you spoke... Uh, they donated us a bus, oh. and we did a mass casualty incident where we had... You had other agencies there, didn't you? We, we invited uh, Capay and Artois, I believe, uh-huh. um, to participate, and basically what it was is uh, one of the captains, Bresky, set it up, a uh, really good drill, uh, a lot of effort and work went into it, and it came out great, but what it was was, I believe he got about 25 kids from the high school and each one had their own problem, whether it was a fatal um, part of the accident or certain types of injuries. And every injury is triaged Mm -hmm. to see how bad it is. You're not gonna take somebody with a cut finger first to the hospital with an incident like that. You're gonna take the most wounded, the most severe, and it's one of the things that we got to train to do. Um, We trained for a couple weeks before that on how to do it, and it was just some great training for us to actually put hands on and see okay this guy needs to be the first one to go because of these injuries Mm -hmm. and this guy can wait this guy needs to fly this guy is walking wounded and is one of of the last to go yet while all that was going on we were asking for resources we were stabilizing the bus Uh, it it was a really good drill and and that's the kind of stuff um, it's exciting to be doing. It's 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 really a good feeling to know how to do that, so that if that happens, oh yeah, we know what to do, and you know that it's happened. Now, do you guys you have you helped with the every fifteen minutes down at the high school? Every chance I get. Do you think that's a good program? That's an incredible program. Um, so I did it in Durham mm-hmm. when I was in volunteer over there. So I got a real good taste of it over there, and then my last year there, my daughter was involved in it. Mm-hmm. And that's a very sobering, oh yeah, sobering thing to go through. And what happens is those kids, as as easy as it would be not to take it serious, it gets serious in a hurry. Mm-hmm. When somebody you know and love gets pulled out of a classroom by a guy in the Grim Reaper outfit, mm-hmm. and you don't see him again for I don't know eighteen hours. Well, th- don't they it, have to also write a letter to you or something like that? Oh, they they write a letter. Yeah. There, there's a lot to that program. But the, the, the big kind of the thing that we're involved in as a fire department is it's a crash scene set up. And we respond to it, CHP, uh, Westside Ambulance. Everybody responds like they, they treat it as, as much as we possibly can like a real crash. Mm-hmm. And it's intense. Oh, yeah. I, I've participated in, shoot, s- at least six now. Oh, wow. And it's intense and it's legit. Because you're cutting people out of cars, you're you're triaging them there. Uh, to almost every one that I've ever been a part of, we've flown at least one out, um, pronounced one dead, and, and it's uh, eye-opening for these kids. I think that's good. Oh, I think that excellent. they need to see that. Excellent program. I remember when I was in high school, they ha- I think they just started it, <clears throat> and they even brought somebody in from the mortuary. Mm-hmm. And so you'd go yeah. to the gym, and you'd sit there, and then they'd have pictures of crashes, that, and they the it was actually – Talk about placement being important. They stuck the pictures of the accident on top of a coffin. So you had to walk past the coffin and flip through these pictures. And they made you stay there until you went through all of them and seen, you know. And most of the people that were directly involved with it, either they lost a child or they were in the accident, they were there in the gymnasium. Yeah. And that was, I think that was the first or second year that they started doing that. I don't know. I'll have to have to Google that and see when they first started. But yeah, it was crazy. No, and, and the thing that really sucks about it is when it's real. Mm-hmm. Because I'll tell you what, that stuff will bring back memories. Mm-hmm. 
because a lot of us have been to those already. Oh, yeah. And it's one of the reasons that I personally do it because I've gone to calls like that that were real. Mm-hmm. And I want those kids to know how dangerous and how life-threatening or how fatal those kind of decisions to drink and drive can be. Yep. I remember being a teenager, especially raising one. My parents it terrified them. They, they just, it scared them to death. And my dad always used to tell me whenever uh, we'd go out, he'd go, you know what? I'm going to tell you one thing, the best advice that I can give you. Nine times out of ten, bad shit is going to happen when you're somewhere where you're not supposed to be. <laughs> so if you don't want anything to happen, I suggest you go where you're supposed to and cut the odds down just a little bit. You know, make sure that you, you, you bring, it, bring it back, come home. I'm like, okay, all right. So chances are whenever I go to a party, I'm like, ah, shit, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm leaving. (laughs) And I'd always leave. (laughs) And then I'd always get busted, so. Yeah, they almost always get busted. They always do. My best advice to my daughter was do not get into a vehicle Mm -hmm. if somebody's been drinking. No. Don't. Call, whatever it takes, but Mm -hmm. don't do that. It's just, (laughs) and, and, you know, it, it happens, and it's ugly when it happens. It's even worse when you have, I remember my girlfriend, she called her mom one time and she said, I'm drunk, can you come and get us? And she goes, I'm drunk too, call somebody else. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that does, that's not a good plan. (laughs) I was like, oh, what are we going to do? My daughter never had to worry about that. (laughs) I think we're hiking home. (laughs) We're going to hitchhike it. (laughs) Yeah, that's safe. (laughs) funny. (laughs) At least they got Uber now. I know, we'd rather get in a car with a stranger. Yeah. (laughs) At least he's not drunk. Yeah, I'll never forget that. She's all, I'm drunk too. <laughs> Okie dokie. So you guys have the, so you guys have the ball coming up. You guys have that coming up in March, and uh, tell people a little bit about that because this will be aired in January, so that'll give you two months. Fireman's of, ball. Let's talk about it. Let's dig into it. It's fireman's ball. Big fundraiser for the volunteers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's where we go door to door and ask the community to support us. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's our biggest fundraiser of the year for the volunteers. Uh, that group of guys that come down 24-7, 365 <laughs> days a year. And you guys split the department in half. You guys, we do. for the we, red and green team. We have uh, to, like make a little it, to, competition. Ma- to make it interesting, to make it a competition, there's the north, the red team, the south, the green team. Mm-hmm. And the name of the game is raise the most money so you don't have to uh, deal with the prize at the end mm-hmm. i know of guys that have herded pigs rode in outhouses <laughs> rode next to the hottest <laughs> six six yeah. 350 oh, pound yeah. man and drag that yes. i've ever seen in my life nothing but sexiness right there yeah that was one of the best but yeah. uh anyway it, it's not the most comfortable thing to do mm-hmm. but it's a very needed thing to do and we knock on your door and we ask um, for a donation. And even if you don't donate, we'll give you tickets to the wall. There you go. It's a good time. Oh it's yeah. uh, But it's a huge fundraiser for us. Mm-hmm. And so one weekend we'll do the city mm-hmm. split up. And uh, the next weekend we'll do the county. And if we miss you, trust us, we will try to come back. <laughs> and so please just open the door. And, yeah. and even if you can't donate, say thank you. I'll catch you next year. Uh-huh. But uh, don't hide. It's, no. it's no fun because we, we do. Part of the gig is... We come back because there's a lot of people that do want to donate, and mm-hmm. if they're not there, um, they weren't given that chance. So we will come back if uh, you're not home mm-hmm. multiple times because, to be quite honest, there's there's we don't want to leave that money out there. No. That's, that's all. And, and the cool thing is a lot of the people that donate to us want to donate to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you, if you want to start looking at numbers of what it would cost insurance-wise, mm-hmm if we weren't the department we were, or what it would cost if this was a paid department. Uh, people of the Orland City and Orland Fire District are getting a really good deal. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. it's, it's you, you, you want this to last as long as it possibly can. I think it's great. Well, I also, I, I like the ball. I really do. I like the fact that the ball, the ball, the ball's a good time. The ball is a blast. You go there and dance to good music and see the community and i think the community really does i mean it's not the same as it used to be i know that they used to do ball gowns and all that kind of stuff i I think the first the first ball i went to was in 96 
was still in high school. And then when Randy and I got together, it was in 97. And I remember that was the last year that I wore a dress. Nobody ever really, because most of the time people would go to see what the women were wearing, yeah. you know. And my mom used to drag yes. out. She used to just have the big, long, poofy dress. And <laughs> it, crap, it's no longer comfortable. Now I go in high heels and then I take my slippers for later. <laughs> comfortable with the ball exactly <laughs> it's wood and i don't want to do it it's hardwood floors well no it's concrete now because it's at the it's fairgrounds concrete, yeah. i know now it is i know it used to be at memorial hall so it's at the I fairgrounds i think we're getting a pretty uh high-end band this year too really i think we're gonna give it a try but uh, uh oh, we'll, uh more, be a more surprise to, more to follow but it's definitely well they used to have cottonwoods cottonwoods played oh, for the greatest ever i mean they played for and shit they the sad thing was is though is they used to play to an empty room and i used to hate that because yeah. everyone would take their trailers to the fairgrounds and yeah. they'd go and you know do that but then when you took the trailers away and made it to where they had to go in there they had to get a drink they had to then they actually stayed and realized mm -hmm. they really enjoyed listening to the band yeah the bands are always good oh yeah we had uh oh god who else was there it was decades. I thought they were fantastic. They were, good. They were really good. Is it Northern and Northern Heat. Heat. Northern Heat was after D after Cotton after Woods. Cottonwoods. Yeah, yeah, they played for several years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then you have the Grand March, which at ten o'clock, <laughs> ten o'clock that night, everyone lines up and does a little does their little jig. Does the jig? Does, does the, the jig. Orland Volunteer mm -hmm. Fire Department jig? <laughs> and most people don't the know. Grand March. Uh, do you know the name of the song that they play? No. It's called Under the Double Eagle. See? Mm, I learn know. something new every day. I know. That's what I'm here for. So then after that is Spaghetti Feed. You guys have a lot of crap going on. No, you guys Spaghetti Feed is actually the first weekend in February. February. That's right. February and then March. Yeah. Third weekend in March will be the ball. Mm -hmm. So Spaghetti Feed, same thing. Fundraiser for everybody to And that's a good time to donate. That's, yeah, it is. That's a real good time. That's mm -hmm. the cake auction. Yes. That's I a big love deal. The cake. Big shout out to Marge Kelly. Yes, Marge Kelly. Oh, every year, your mother, she uh, makes a cake, and, and every year it goes for more and more money. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a big uh, fundraising cake. Yes. And now, but there are some guys in the community that have always supported her cake, uh, Steve Halsey, Steve Jim Halsey. Pascal. Yes. It's, uh, it's always fun and very gratifying to uh, see her legacy. Mm -hmm. I remember, what was it, last year it went for quite a bit of money, and I the people that bought it, I looked at and I said, I want to know what almost a grand of a cake tastes like. <laughs> And I wasn't disappointed. Nope. <laughs> it was amazing. That woman can bake. <laughs> she can definitely bake. So then you guys do spaghetti feed. You guys have a raffle. You guys have cake auction. I mean, you guys do pretty good. I mean, that's yeah, that, that you know. goes straight to buying mm -hmm. equipment. I think that's so, great. No, it's it's a very very labor intensive, but very it's that's a fun event. It's a long day. I but was going to say that's event. standing on concrete all yeah. day long, Stir, serving stirring noodles. Stirring noodles. <laughs> Yep, your husband knows about that. <laughs> yes, he He's does. a noodler. He's a noodler. Got, somehow I got put on the noodle crew, so uh, yeah. it's a good time back so there. It's so funny. Uh, my daughter always tells me, can I go and serve for spaghetti feed this year? And Randy's just like, oh, that means if she goes down, then I got to go He down. needs to be there. He has so, to be there. But I remember there. doing that as a kid, too. I was a server. I was a kid server. And, you know, it's a, it's a that, that lifestyle for the kids down there, that's a, that's a cool lifestyle. Oh, absolutely. It's, I was raised fun. down there. Yeah, you know. I was raised down there. I obviously wasn't down there as much as you were, but I was down there a lot, and I really yeah. enjoyed my time down there as a kid. Yep. I, rem I remember V.C. Williams and Vi. I remember falling asleep on the pool table, <laughs> you know. And they, yeah. you know, you'd always tell at the end of the night when it was time to shut her down is the relish trays. Instead of being all over the pool table, it was only half. And you're like, <laughs> oh, it's getting ready to almost shut done. down. Yeah. We're almost done. And then Vi would throw me up on there and <laughs> give me a jacket and cover me up, and we'd be good to go. So, yeah, so that's February. It's the Farmer's Ball in March. And then you guys got your new paid chief. Sounds like you guys got a lot of things going on. There's a lot of, lot of big changes, in the, in the, especially the last 10 years. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how long we've been being dispatched through Corning. But uh, that was a huge change for us. Mm -hmm. And then the paid chief's another big one, and some of the equipment we're getting. Mm -hmm. But uh, So what's new on the docket? What do you guys got going on now? Anything good? Oh, there's always something going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, I'll be honest with you, our biggest push right now has to be getting this uh, land of assessment mm -hmm. for the rural yep. to be passed through. It, just, it, it has to happen. 
or it's it's going to be a negative change mm -hmm. and, and we don't want that we oh. as a volunteer group don't want that no and I, i'm sorry when something hasn't been raised in 30 years it obviously needs to change it does and it needs to be um, changed sooner than later we, we have some issues that need to be dealt with quickly uh, so that's not an issue well another thing too is people see you know something that's going to cost them which most of it is not like you said anytime you see a raise of anything you're like ah, i don't know i don't know if we should do this or i don't know if that should happen but i mean you, this is something that needs to be done it mm -hmm. has to yeah. there's no question about it it was no different than the measure a tax yeah. that we had put through and most of the people don't even they don't e they don't, they don't notice it. it no you don't see it you don't see it but we're we're you guys are you guys need those benefits in order to keep people safe so well, that's the, the alternative is not going to be good and that's no. that's you know i'm not trying to scare anyone or anything like that i'm not trying to make it sound and as a negative because it's actually going to be a very huge positive for the department once it passes but it does need to pass mm -hmm. yep i hope that it does i really do and people just need to educate themselves i mean if they see it and they have a question about it there's multiple people that they can go in yeah. contact and, with and, and they can ask them there there are, i am more than happy to come speak to any group that wants mm -hmm. to hear about what's going on what needs to to happen and why it needs to happen and i can go a li lot more in depth i'll have more numbers and obviously than i do right now mm -hmm. uh, but uh it's definitely something we are more than willing to come speak to any group or person about i think that's great another thing i think is awesome too is that you guys have a rule board you guys have somebody that you know you guys have an actual board that people can go and contact and they can talk and they can sit there and they can dive into whatever needs to be done and mm -hmm. have you ever thought about being on the rule board i have have you i have we'll see how that plays out i i've been blessed with the gift of being able to speak i guess <laughs> and yes. being passionate about something <laughs> and those two can go hand in hand especially for something like this uh -huh. so we'll see how that plays out well I tell you what, I think it's awesome. And also now you, how many years were you with pg and &E? oh, I'll be 35 in January. 35 years. That is crazy. Congratulations. Thanks. I think that's awesome. Got to figure out what the next chapter is going to be. I was going to say, you have retirement coming up. You have. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything like, do you see yourself becoming the one that sleeps in and nah. maybe watches the Hallmark in? Channel? My biggest thing is no, definitely not. Uh, my biggest thing will be not having that phone ring. Really? Every night, every weekend. That's been going on for over 30 years. Do you ever, th do you think you'll sit there and be like, God, I'm bored. I'm bored. No. I need to go do something. No. No? I'm, I will not be bored. No? I will be doing something. I just don't know what yet. I, I, I have been off for a few weeks and I make quite a few fire calls now. <laughs> there you go. Do you have to regiment yourself? Do you have to be like, okay, Monday's laundry day, Tuesday. I have to spread it out. Because really, I mean, you don't have any push now. So well, it's not. I, well, no, I do laundry twice a week. And, you know, I go to the gym three days a week. Oh, you then know, you, you do way more than I do but now. It's one of the, but there's a reason I do that. I don't ever want to be that guy that can't drag somebody out of a burning building. That's true. Very and good. Stay so limber. I got to stay loose. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely so, love it. There'll be some other things in the future. I don't. I don't know what yet, but uh, I, I've been pretty committed to my job for 35 years. Mm -hmm. I need to uh, do a little traveling or something. Do something. Just don't. Away. Just don't be those type of people that show up at like the local diner at like 6 a.m. and sit there and complain and then go home and, and sit there and fall asleep from 11 to 1 until it's time to get up for lunch. Call the siesta. What's wrong with that? <laughs> do you find yourself taking no, naps? I no, I don't take many naps yet. <sighs> I love, love a good nap, though. Oh, <laughs> my God. I remember the best nap I ever had was whenever Robin Williams was on HBO. And that was the last time, and I don't even know when the hell that was, but I fell asleep in front of the TV. And I remember waking up going, oh, God, that felt so good. And then most of the time I wake up and I feel like shit. But yeah. that was one I just, I, I think that was after a fireman's ball, too. Oh, but <laughs> that'll do it to you. <laughs> there are definitely times after, you know, you get called out at, one or two in the morning and you go fight fire for a couple hours and by the time you get everything cleaned up and back mm -hmm. up and on the engine and it's uh, daylight and it's like man that was a long day do you have a hard time winding down after a call so, like do you find so yourself doing certain things in order a, to do that's that that's a funny question i used to be able to go to a call mm -hmm. and come home and go right back to sleep 
and I have found in the last few years that I can't go back to sleep anymore. It's a drag. It really is a is drag. Is it playback in your head, no, or does no, it just no, I don't. your body's just up and you're awake and there's no point? No, I'm in... just I just can't sleep, and I used to just go right back to sleep as soon as I hit the pillow, and I was you know good till the alarm went off. And now sometimes, not every time, but a lot of times. You know, I don't go right back to sleep, Someone and that's hard. And I don't know if that's an age thing or what, but it's I think it's it is. not a good feeling. Now that day, I might take a nap. <laughs> Either that or in bed by seven, one of the two. Yeah, that's hard too. <laughs> not now, not now. I'll it is dark out. It's die. crazy. It's absolutely crazy. <laughs> yep. Well, hey, I uh, oh shit, it's almost been an hour. Yeah, yucky little rascal on there. I love it. So. All, you, all the things you guys have coming up, we got the assessment thing coming up, you guys. Is there anything that you really want that you didn't get a chance to express that you really want to let people know of, you know, what your takes are or, you know, what is what is something that you guys, that you really want people to know about, either you, the department, or anything like that, something that you, you well, want them to know? I, I feel this way, but as a community the best word I can use is we are blessed with this department and we are blessed with the people that are in it. Mm -hmm. You've got some really good people, some really well-trained, some really hardworking, some really dedicated people mm -hmm. in this department. And I'm not looking for a pat on the back, but I will tell you we are blessed as a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. All right, we're one hundred percent. And and the cool thing is, and I'm I'm proud of this because I it isn't always this way, is the working relationships with say, Oregon Police Department, Glen County Sheriff's Office, uh, West Side Ambulance, uh, even the medics that come in from out of town for the most part. Mm -hmm. We work together really well. There's not much drama there, mm -mm. and it's not always that way. No. And, no, no, no. and we do get compliments. I recently had a compliment from uh, one of the medics that came from out of town on a, a very severe call that we had about how well we work. And it didn't please me as how it was put to us for a volunteer department. Mm -hmm. And I kind of laughed. I used to get so pissed when people and, say and, that. And it's like, and that's when I go back to the 365, 24 <laughs> hours a day. What's your shift? Three days? But anyway, I... Uh, it, it was a great compliment because that's how it was intended. It's like, you guys are amazing for, you know, mm -hmm. wow, very impressed. And, and that's a good feeling, especially as a chief, as, as one of the guys in charge. It's like, yeah, I know we are. Mm -hmm. I used to we, get so pissed off when people would say that. they go, well, you guys, you know, you guys aren't bad for a volunteer organization. <laughs> you know, your husband O is just a volunteer. Yeah. And I'm thinking, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, back in the, back in the day, because where I was before, paid guys the whole two in two out thing mm -hmm. and two guys one of them has to run that engine so mm -hmm. there's a lot of times they were waiting for me to get there <laughs> <laughs> you're like it's hmm, amazing how you go from being just, just a volunteer to hey get your ass in here yeah. we need you we need really you. bad <laughs> so, yeah. no i i uh, i used to get so pissed that used to just oh god i'd walk away and be and, you know, you find yourself throwing out numbers of shit that you really shouldn't know, but you do. And you're like, ah, you know, if they're just a volunteer, then yeah. why are they doing this? And the ETA is well, this. And I know. got a guy in the volunteers have been in here 42 years. I'll put him up against anybody. Anybody. Yep. 42 years of experience. Mm -hmm. There's guys, you know, from anywhere from, you know, six months to 30 years. Mm -hmm. there, there's some experience and have seen so much. And it makes a huge difference when you get to that call. But also, too, I think... I th it really is true. There's, you can't look into a book the whole entire time. You just no. really can't. You're going to have to sit back. You're going to have to watch. You're going to have to learn that way. Hands on. And you said it earlier in the conversation. You don't know what you're getting till you mm -hmm. get there. And mm -hmm. even when you get there, it's not a static event. It's ever changing. It's mm -hmm. dynamic. And you have to respond to what happens. And things constantly change. Medical conditions constantly change. Fire behavior constantly changes. It's all things nothing's ever the same mm -mm. every call is different see i i always say that too i mean especially whenever you think that it's just a mild call i mean it could turn to shit in two minutes oh, it doesn't I've, matter I've, I've seen it both ways i thought we're going to the nastiest call around 
and it's no big deal and I've gone to something that was going to be super simple and we're going to drive away in two minutes turned to absolute crap um yeah it it's it, you don't know what you're getting Mm-mm. and also society sucks too I mean yeah. you got to remember everything's changed I mean they're not to the point to where they're I mean most of them you know before whenever they see the fire trucks you know people you know oh it's great it's this and that God, I hear now that people are getting shot at and there's you know people actually going against the firemen and that's it's crazy you no, guys have, to, be, you would be you have to have your head on a swivel you would be surprised at what happens at calls that's all i'm gonna say about oh, that yeah. you would Absolutely. be shocked actually yeah. it's, human behavior it's no fun having to call for law enforcement Mm-mm. and those guys those, a big shout out to those guys opd opd so chp in this mm-hmm. in this area you got some real professionals and you know kind of annoys me when i hear the backstab and the back talking with the, uh, to about those guys but uh you know what until you've walked in those shoes i'll tell mm-hmm. you right now you've got no clue no nope, they're great and not only that but people got to remember that's why they do the job is because other people are unable to so yeah. you know they're the ones that are going out there that's yeah. the ones that are doing it yeah. and exactly i give a huge amount of props to them mm-hmm. i think it's great well to it's a thankless job it is but i thank you very much Welcome. And I thank you for coming on there. Sure. Thanks for the invite. Hey, it was a blast. Wasn't it? All right. So in the next couple of weeks, you're going to be retired. You're going to be out and you'll be good to go. And I <laughs> I hope that you're not uh, going to be napping at two o'clock in the no, afternoon. No, 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 and no. Uh, you need to learn how to do Sudoku. <laughs> All right, Dave. Thanks so much for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs>